Welcome back to the Rational Mister Dot Com, the Rhino Chicken Show. Trade your trading plans. Don't take too much risk on anyone. Trade and just let yourself get rich. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the RationalInvestor.com's uh, weekend show. This is our broiler chicken show. Uh, unfortunately, I'm uh, under the weather. I guess uh, Liam had a cold or something. So on Thursday, when I went and had my visit with him, uh, I picked up that bug and I've just uh, had a pretty uh, yucky Saturday. And uh, probably uh, just finished this. I uh, told the team that I would... Uh, Probably not make it out to the house uh, today. So I'll probably finish this video and head off to bed. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really report on uh, the website because uh, uh, right now it's basically broken, uh, the breadth indicator. Uh, and we're waiting on Sjord to uh, fix that and try and figure out what uh, went wrong and um, get it working again. Uh, and I did see that uh, basically the questions are about, um, you know, from the AMA document, uh, are you guys doing anything uh, portfolio wise? And the only answer that I can give you is yes, we do have uh, portfolios up and running, but they're just, uh, you know, um, our CTO decided to take uh, the page where we have our fundamental investments uh, off the site and I have no idea when he's going to bring that back so it's not really a hell of a lot for me to report to you guys here today uh with regard to the site I'm a little disappointed to be honest with you but anyway uh we did up a newsletter Chris did you get the pdf uh, of this uh, produced I don't know whether he's done that yet or not let's see what we have all right, so uh, we do have a cute little newsletter that we've uh, put together. We haven't done one for the past month because of all the traveling and being sick overseas and stuff, just not really in a good frame of mind to produce stuff. Um, anyway, so unfortunately, can't really interpret too much out of the breadth indicator because it's kind of broken right now. Uh, did... Uh, I uh, did a little bit of a commentary about uh, this past week, uh, what we saw in the broader market. Uh, of course, uh, twice a year, the U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman uh, is forced to uh, step in front of uh, the U.S. government, the U.S. Congress, who theoretically gives them authority to pull off their con job that they do so eloquently. Uh, twice a year, called the Humphrey Hawkins testimony, and of course, that's just Sadly, it's it's mostly just you know political grandstanding, uh, and uh, not really a hell of a lot comes out of it other than everybody pats themselves on the back and what a wonderful job they're doing, screwing over the public. Anyway, so um, you know what I found amusing about the whole exercise is uh, the politicians themselves were even joking about, uh, oh, well, $18 cookies seems to be the norm for our society now. Oh, chuckle, chuckle, chuckle. <laughs> All those poor peasants. Yeah, they're just getting screwed over, aren't they? Uh, and then nothing changes. So anyway, as uh, we're all well aware, Klaus and the 1%'s Great Reset is well underway. And uh, basically the confiscation of a generation's wealth right in front of your eyes. Poof. Uh, of course, I've gone on at length about what inflation is uh, and uh, what causes it. And by all means, if you really want to learn, of course, most people in the public don't really want to learn. They'd rather just bury their heads in the sand. Uh, but if you do want to learn, if you want to take the time to figure out how bad the corruption is in our society and what uh, drives this uh, thing called inflation, um, I've often made reference to a good old Uncle Milty uh, and Milton uh, Friedman and uh, his very eloquent uh, illustration of what inflation is and, of course, how completely out of control it is with these stupid... Uh, 
politicians of ours. There doesn't seem to be a damn thing you can do about it. Because as soon as any politician comes into power that says, okay, enough is enough, we're going to put our society back on a, a firm footing, uh, the, you know, the banksters uh, end up taking a pop at them. They did it with Reagan, did it with Kennedy, did it with Lincoln. Uh, they tried to pull it off with, uh, with uh, old Hickory. I always forget his name. Anyway. Uh, they weren't able to pull him off. And he was actually the only U.S. president in the history of the United States that actually was able to put the banksters back in the box. Sadly, actually, just about 100 years later, uh, Woodrow Wilson uh, basically gave the banksters uh, the green light to take over our society. And, you know, since then, 1913, creation of the U.S. Federal Reserve Act, which really is nothing more than the Rothschilds, just basically taking over our society. Uh, we live in this world that uh, they run. So hope you're enjoying it. And half the reason why we're involved in Bitcoin, of course, is because of this fraud, scandal, scam, theft, if you will. In fact, actually, even Mr. Greenspan himself, probably one of the only central bankers that I actually really respect. Uh, over the years, he even said that uh, basically this is the confiscation of a nation's wealth, this whole inflation shit. And it's all made up. It's, it's all just a load of horse shit. And, you know, ironically enough, I, I've often uh, joked with you guys about this in a weird sort of way. I think the Americans kind of see, of course, because they're the hegemony, uh, they're trying to get control of this. Uh, I don't know how well this is going to go, I and mean, it's tough to say, but, you know, in communist China, uh, excuse me, communist China, duh, <laughs> uh, there's no controlling these bastards at all. Uh, and so the hyperinflation just goes on and on and on. So anyway, $18 cookies seems to be our new, uh, our new norm. Anyway, um, I don't know what else uh, really there is to report here. I mean, that's, you know, uh, I'm having fun watching YouTube videos about people escaping uh, the insanity and going living on sailboats. <laughs> anyway, one way to uh, vicariously escape all this, I guess. Uh, the one good part about this, of course, is we should all be able to afford our sailboats and uh, head off into the sunset with uh, everything that we're doing in the market. Um you know, an interesting tweet that I saw and probably, you know, sort of the reason why I'm doing all of this. Um, I think it was our uh, our CTO. No, it wasn't. Who was it? It was Josh, I think. Uh, it was sort of our, our marketing guy, I guess you'd call him. I'm not quite sure what you'd call him. But anyway, he uh, pointed uh, this out very eloquently. The more doubles than you can shake a stick at. Uh, and it's remarkable just coming into uh, the TRI uh, lounge on a daily basis. <laughs> These people are making so much money, it's ridiculous. And you don't necessarily have to sell half on a double. In fact, actually, our... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, our newsletter article here this week, I always like to point out uh, a market that uh, caught my attention. This happened to be a sell half on a triple. So there's nothing wrong with that. You can do that all day long. The issue here, though, is you have to understand, you know, I mean, like, look at this. This is a period from uh, like, uh, what, April, May of this year, right through to the end of the year. You know, this is like, what, eight or nine months the price basically does nothing. Of course, oh, what a surprise. Cute little W is coming in all over here. Uh, you know, here's another window, you know, I suppose from like this date here. Again, sort of like what's that, March? All the way right through basically to the end of the year. Price did nothing. I mean, you could argue that price right here was exactly the same as price right here. So all of a sudden, price goes straight up, you know, parabolic moves. And uh, people don't realize that markets spend most of the time of their lives going sideways or, heaven forbid, going
going down. Mark had spent very, very little time in these windows, you know, like this one here, one from bottom, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, what is this? This is a weekly chart? Yeah, a week. So five weeks was the rally and then back to crap. And then, you know, look at this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then sort of chop central. You know, this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then, you know, big pullback, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, maybe entirely there. But uh, so, you know, when you see the market going like this, one, two, three, four, five weeks straight up here, what concerns me is that people think that this is just, this is the way that prices normally act. And the answer is actually the exact opposite. This is a rarity in the market. You know, they say that usually markets trend like 20, maybe 30% of the time, probably more like about 25. Uh, and they range, you know, 70 to 80% of the time. And they actually spent a lot of times going down. In fact, when uh, I was a broker, you have to think about these things as actually currencies themselves. Like if this was a company stock and they actually use the company stock to buy and sell things, they might even use the company stock to buy other companies, you know, mergers, stock swaps. Probably heard that before. Uh, quite often, you know, you'll entice, uh, entice uh, uh, people to join your company with the issuance of stock options and stock grants. I would imagine to a certain degree that crypto is uh, basically the same thing. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. And if anything, one thing you have to concern yourself about when price do go goes crazy like this, especially with something like Ethereum, is it just makes using the actual Mr. Vitalik supercomputer that much more expensive. I don't even think it's really in anybody's best interest that things like Ethereum price actually keeps going up. Isn't then the cost to actually do the transactions. This is where Elizabeth Warren goes crazy, right? So we have to understand that this is this is an abnormality, not a normality. <laughs> is that a word? Uh, uh, and if anything, what we do here is we sit like week after week, month after month, you know, coming in, want to buy W's, right? Buy the bottom end range, and then just sit. And just patiently wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And then the damn thing goes crazy. And, you know, we're here to make money from trading. So that means that if we do go and buy here, well, we the only way you're going to make money from doing this is you have to sell when this kind of craziness happens. You know, and it, this is a really good example, you know, big old W, big up market. If you just said, well, you know, I'm a bull and I don't care, you know, I'll buy hot oil, all that, right? Well, the damn thing comes right back down to the bottom. It was like a big hurry up and do nothing. Are you making money from trading? Just going and maybe even buying this reversal down here, but doing absolutely nothing? No, you're just, you're invested. Great, wonderful. Uh, but if you're here to, um, when these markets do go parabolic like this, you got to take some profits, ring the register. Can you do that? I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, this is what I do as a hallmark. But remember, I, I've been doing this game for like 30 years. This is the business of making money from trading as you force yourself to sell when the markets afford you the opportunity uh, to actually see your Uh, there's a million different ways to skin a cat in this game. Now, this is looking at a weekly price chart. And you can pull up a 10-minute futures chart, and it would actually look exactly the same. No difference. Uh, that's the beautiful part about what we do as technicians is the universe is a fractal. So that means that as you scale up and down in time, the image doesn't change at all. It's exactly the same. Well, universe is just built on triangles. Uh, so, 
You know, I think probably the most important thing here is you as a market participant have to sort of recognize the uh, the very normal behavioral patterns by the rest of the peons out there because they act in very, very similar fashion. It's remarkable how consistent this is. And yet the irony of it all is when you see the hallmarks come up, that you're like, well, you know, there is a perfect classic hallmark that when this happens, you have to understand we're probably near the end of the run, not the beginning. Um, and yet the irony of it all is when you actually you actually hear people, you know, the classic one, this time it's different. Why? Because these people need to justify this thing, just keep going up and 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 up. I mean, the good part about putting yourself on a plan like sell half on a double or sell half on a triple or whatever it is, is you take all that sort of decision making process out of the equation. Um, I've never seen anybody ever. I've never, ever, ever seen anybody ever uh, discretionarily trade the market. Uh, and just their pure opinion uh, drives uh, returns. It's always some sort of systematic approach. Uh, you know, even a guy like Stanley Druckenmiller, you know, he often just simply says, look, at, I just listen to what the Fed does and I do the exact opposite. <laughs> so <laughs> if the Fed is you know, throwing bags of money at the market and pleading for people to invest, well, then Stanley goes and invests. <laughs> when everybody in the public, of course, is freaking out and dumping everything. And then conversely, when, you know, the Fed's trying to cool things down and slow things down uh, and, you know, really stepping on the brakes uh, and the public is absolutely euphoric and, you know, it's buying, 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 he's often in there selling. So, you know, I, I hate to say it, but all the hallmarks, everything about what a end of a bull run looks like, I see all over the market here right now, including, and it actually is really disappointing, I see that people who have actually taken my course, which clearly means that this course is not really being respected and the information is not really being respected. The information that I'm trying to teach and I sell in a product is being basically ignored. And uh, all of the things that I'm trying to teach all of you people are being completely disregarded. Uh, and it's, it's, it's it's it, it makes me wonder whether I really should continue doing this because it's just, you know, they always say, uh, what's the definition of insanity? Uh, just keep trying to do the same damn thing and getting the same results over and over and over. And of course, you see how many people watch these videos. So uh, clearly the message is not getting through. Uh, anyway, I don't know. Uh, at some point, I'll probably uh, hang up my shingle and head off into the sunset. Not quite sure when that'll be. Of course, uh, probably uh, while I'm under the weather and not feeling very good, it's probably not the time to make that decision, but anyway. So, uh, you know, with regard to Bitcoin, of course, uh, we do have a very big fundamental event uh, that's not very far away. Uh, and of course, you've got, you know, Mr. Stock Market uh, ETF guy pumping the uh, prime in the pump here uh, with his uh, with his exchange traded funds. I find it a little bit sad that I don't hear a single person talking about what the fundamental value of one Bitcoin is. Uh, which is kind of sad because in years gone by, of course, uh, you know, market uh, experts, quote unquote, that's all they do is they would talk fundamentals. Uh, and yet you don't hear a single person talking about what is the fundamental value of one Bitcoin. Don't hear a single person talking about that, which scares me 
because I think we can figure out what the value of one Bitcoin is. It's just it's not in like Mr. Fink's interest touting his ETFs for people to have that conversation, because clearly uh, <laughs> we're nowhere near fundamental value. And, you know, there's an old adage in this mar in this business, the market will remain illogical far longer than anyone can remain solvent. And these things, they, you know, they get pushed around here um, at length. And this thing doesn't have to trade at any particular price. So as a result, when you get like price momentum uh, behind a story and we're heading into a fundamental event window, um, this can turn into a runaway freight train. And that's exactly what's going on here. Like I said, when you see this kind of price action, you have to look at this and go, is that normal? Is that is that what usually happens? Keep in mind, like this is a, like a full year period where price did nothing. All of a sudden in five weeks, price has tripled and that's normal? No, it's not normal. How long this lasts, my hunch is, you know, for whatever it's worth, as I said there a moment ago, uh, we do have a very big fundamental event coming up here for the Bitcoin space. And it's interesting, like when I was in uh, Central America here uh, about a month ago, and uh, Central American com countries are trying to convince their populations to uh, adopt uh, Bitcoin, I tell you, the place where we had a, I don't know, meetup. I don't know whether you want to call it a meetup or not. The people that were uh, actually living there, I don't even think they could even afford a computer. I mean, the poverty, just absolutely stunning. Um, and the government representative at the meetup he couldn't even explain to me i just you know out of curiosity i just asked him so how does bitcoin actually represent value how how do you what why would anybody associate any value to this bitcoin thing couldn't couldn't for the life of me explain like something like the blockchain or what ledgers are couldn't explain it at all so to me this is this is sadly actually it's very very cliche i mean like stunningly cliche how bad this is but all i can say is there's no way in hell i would buy a bitcoin here at seventy thousand dollars that's just idiocy as far as i'm concerned but you know like we said Market can remain illogical far longer than anyone can remain solvent. So exactly where this top is, I, I don't think it's in anybody's best interest to get into the game of predicting where uh, price will ultimately top out. My hunch is that it's probably going to be some funny number. I mean, I find it hilarious that nobody in the market talked about the fact that they topped this thing that last cycle at 69,000 on the nose. I mean, that was done p totally on purpose. Or the previous cycle, you know, like this uh, cycle peak here, market topped out at 19,666. Again, you know, that was not by accident. Somebody clearly wanted that exact number for the market to top out. So I don't know where we top out. My hunch here, though, is, uh, you know, big fat round numbers. We had 25,000, 50,000. My hunch here is that they want to tag 75 Gs. That, that would be uh, my hunch. And then also, too, if we look at things like daily price charts, uh, 1.618, which I think is a pretty good uh, objective here to use. Uh, these alt ABCDs, when you get up into this 1.618 level, nine times out of 10, that turns out to be just an absolutely fantastic trade location. So, uh, you know, I don't know where it is, but it's interesting if we did actually top here, 
we would attribute it to a 1.272 uh, alt A, B, C, D, fib extension uh, topping zone of PRZ, potential reversal zone, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and interestingly enough, you know, I even put out this tweet saying, you know, about, well, I don't know, about two or three weeks ago, suggesting I think there's a whole bunch of reasons for us to look for the market to top through this window. It would just be very normal. And you know what I find fascinating is nobody will talk to me about the fact that if you look at Litecoin, it did exactly this a year ago. And we even called this. We like totally predicted this. It was just like the absolute perfect scenario where, uh, and actually this one doesn't have it. Uh, we actually had the uh, the happening event like red drawn, drawn up right on the chart. Uh, I don't know where the hell I have it. May not, may not have been Coinbase. Uh, yeah, here it is. So, and interestingly enough, oh, I got to sneeze. Hold on. Uh, do I? Say, look into the light. Don't go into the light. Just look into it. <laughs> oh, no sneeze. Um. You know, this is basically what I see us doing right now. We are going parabolic. Uh, here was the happening event. And ironically enough, Litecoin actually has done this several times. It loves to top out about a month or so ahead of its happening event. I don't see any reason why Bitcoin wouldn't do exactly the same thing. Uh, and of course, I've shown you uh, in uh, this was the 1516 cycle, which I think is what the cycle we're in now. And if you think about this, this is what really freaks you out, <laughs> is uh, the 1516 cycle. Look how it uh, ended. <laughs> and it, if a good old Donnie Orange Toupee is reelected down in the States, well, we're probably going to get exactly the same thing. And, you know, maybe this is like your million dollar Bitcoin. Who fucking knows? But I would not be surprised if this is what our future looks like here for Bitcoin. So get ready. But, you know, here is the happening event. You know, what a big surprise. Uh, one, two, three, four, I guess uh, five weeks of straight up here, you know, and, and through this environment, right? You'd be like, oh, this time it's different. We're all going to get rich. And then badoosh, doosh, baboosh, boosh, doosh, right back down. So interestingly enough, also, too, uh, you know, this is a weekly price chart. Look at the moving averages. You can see how wide the moving average is. And I've told all of you in the past, you know, if you've if you listened to me at all, when these moving averages start getting really wide like this, you really should expect some sort of consolidation period so that the moving averages can come back together again. Uh, and very normal 50% retracement, but notice the moving averages didn't cross bearish. So as long as these moving averages, and you can see a nice little bullish turn right in here, especially off nice W's in price. You know, basically your trends turned up here and it did not turn back down. And you can see, this is why I really like using this moving average relationship. It did not turn back down until way over here. You know, it's that 10,000 bucks. And actually that makes sense because I remember through this whole run, uh, the big scuttlebutt was, was Bitcoin going to reach 10 Gs? It turns out it doubled that. So interestingly enough, I hear a lot of people say that ah, Bitcoin's going to top out up, I don't know, 150, 200,000, something like that. So probably what ends up happening is Bitcoin tops out at like a half a million or something. And then it goes through a topping process and then the uh, moving averages ultimately cross back bearish around 200,000 or something. That wouldn't surprise me. But the point here is that as long as these moving averages are pointing up and we are in this particular part of the cycle, BTC happening kind of talk, well, I certainly wouldn't be bearish, but you know, just like what I just said there a moment ago, you notice how wide the moving averages got even through this period, All right? So uh, cross back bullish here and uh, you know, got pretty wide up through here, through here, had to actually come back in, squeeze back together, turn back up again. 
Uh, and you can see that you know, they're pretty darn wide right now. So what, the way I would basically describe this is we're in a rip-roaring bull. Things have probably gone a little bit too far ahead of themselves. And we probably could use a nice, simple consolidation, maybe a move back down to 50% levels just to clean things up. The issue here, of course, is, you know, do you come in and buy up here? You know, if you just buy Bitcoins, well, you probably won't get destroyed. If you go and like, you know, buy on leverage or buy a futures product or something like that, you're probably going to get wiped out. So you just, you have to respect the context of where we are in this cycle. Can you do that? I don't know. You know, as I had said there just a moment ago, you know, the easiest way for you to understand this and, you know, the way that I've been profitable, like literally for, geez, I guess the past 20 years, whenever I invest, I don't lose money. But at the same time, too, I'm not going to go and fucking like, uh, oops, uh, go and, uh, you know, be uh, driving Lambos next week. I'm just slow and steady kind of guy. Uh, is when I see a uh, price going parabolic, that in itself is a warning sign. Uh, but more importantly, I don't think, just don't think, just run your plan, right? Your plan, that's it. You do the plan all ahead of time, right? And if we were sitting down here and uh, I said, well, my plan is if this thing triples, I'm going to pay myself for my hard work. Well, a lot of people go triple, use three hundred percent return. That's that's not a bad idea to pay yourself. But when it actually happens, then people are like, "Well, no, no, you'd be a fool to sell here." Like what? So anyway, I don't think. Don't think you get yourself in trouble if you think too much. Just build your plan, follow your plan. And interestingly enough, I took my money that I took out of this. And I went and bought a name that looks like it's doing something like this. You want to know what that is? That's this guy. Look at that pretty little uh, inverted head and shoulders. Actually, not technically a head and shoulders, but eh, you could say cup and handle. Uh, I don't know. You tell me, does this thing have any room to move up here? Could, could I bang out a double on something like this going down the road? I mean, that is, this is just off of this range. Suppose we could probably uh, take this off of this ultimate high. That's way up there. Right? It's crazy. So, you know, all I, again, I don't think what I want to do is I want to find markets that are Wing. And I go in, I'll take money out of one market and I'll put it into another market. I don't have a problem buying something that looks like that. In fact, uh, you know, this kind of price pattern, when you see that sort of you know, the jump up, consolidation, and then push up. Uh, I was on a, uh, a broadcast, uh, one of our uh, TRI OGers, although he's using the expression this time, it's different, which makes me sick to my stomach. Uh, gosh, people will never learn. Uh, I went on his broadcast and I was uh, touting one of his, uh, the Solana names, which is so funny. And it's basically the same thing, just different pile. So you can see there's the W. I actually started nibbling way back here when this thing was way below uh, reload zones off of this huge explosive move up here. I did some buying here. I was going to try and buy some more of this thing the other day, but I saw this come in here. Actually, it's surprising this volume doesn't show. But a huge, huge volume came in on this candle. And when I saw that, I was like, holy crap, this thing's going to explode. And sure enough, there it goes. <laughs> so, you know, there's an old expression, volume speaks volume. So uh, if you really want to learn how to play this game, what you really have to do is you have to uh, be able to understand and interpret volume. So, uh, yeah, there was the big volume spike there the other day. So, you know, this is the same thing as that energy web kind of trade it's identical but there is that huge volume i was like hello this thing's going higher and sure enough there it goes if anything the big question now is does the volume back off here if we don't make new highs on this then that's probably the end of the run for the time being but anyway cute little uh name 
Man, really good example. I, I, I want, I actually do have a bid working down here. I never got filled. That's the one bad part about doing these DeFi names. It's tough to get fills on these things, but nonetheless, uh, definitely thinking in the right direction. And the point here is, am I going to be a buyer up here? No fucking way. I mean, will I buy the W? Eh, maybe. Uh, what I really wanted to do was buy down in here, but I just couldn't get filled. Jerks. <laughs> but anyway, it's the way it goes. Uh, and so we're just doing this. You know, if anything, uh, this is a really good example. Uh, the community funded me with $500 worth of this Solana. And we're just slowly working it up. Somebody did give me an NFT, which is awfully cute of them. That's this thing here. It's worth 300 bucks or so, so. I don't think we're up over eleven, twelve hundred right now, but uh, eh, eight, nine hundred bucks on the five hundred dollars. Great. Just uh, this is exactly what I did with the uh, with the uh, Trex account so many years ago. And my hunch here is I'll run this up into a hundred thousand, whatever, into this coming cycle. Eh, just rinse and repeat. Just the same old crap over and over and over. Nothing changes here. Uh, we did have a question. I, mean, I don't know what it is uh, about this particular go round, but our website is just sucking horse cocks right now, which is such a shame. I mean, the community's great. The functionality, you know, oh, we can uh, process payments. We're awesome. But the engine's not working. And, you know, I don't want to go into debt to run this place. So it's just your do working on his own. <laughs> So the engine's kind of broken. And, you know, if anything, I like uh, the fact that the kids got me set up on this Solana and on these sites like Step right here, because I'll just leave it all up to them. I don't want to do all this shit. And if anything, maybe what I need to do is hire an admin, admin assistant to do all this, because I hate doing this crap. So as a result, uh, like the little old lady page that we have on the site, it's working and yeah, the accounts are making lots of money. It's great. But the reporting of this is just crap. Um, so, you know, my, that's one of the questions, you know, Brian, why does the website look like shit? Well, you know, I just, I don't know. I just can't wrap my head around this. It's just, ugh. anyway, um, we got one guy who's sort of the chief technology officer and uh, he drains well over, well, a very large portion of the revenue of the site goes to him and all of the different services and stuff that he wants us to pay for. So uh, I certainly am not going to go into debt for it. So it is what it is. It, this is in his hands. And uh, if he wants to, for some reason, we had uh, a fundamental uh, page of fundamental picks, but he decided he wanted to take that page down. So these questions here, uh, appreciate your guys' interest in the pages and stuff like that, but I'll tell you, I'm really not doing that good of a job uh, on the website reporting this stuff. It's really, really amateur. Well, I'll fully acknowledge that. I'm so disappointed in this site, I'll tell you that much, but oh well. Um, I will say that, you know, we spent a lot of time integrating this Discord. So anybody who's on the uh, website, um, you can always, uh, whatever I do on the site, I uh, post in Brian's trades. So, you know, there was that energy webs that I just told you that I bought. Um, and of course, uh, all our little banging out doubles and all that kind of fun stuff. So, you know, I, I'll report everything that I do here. Um, but I will say that one of the major problem that I'm running into uh with this is uh you know in my country now most of the cryptocurrency exchanges are illegal they're like basically outright um you know yeah that trudeau guy who's running my country i mean god he's turning this into like some sort of stalinist state it's shocking how how bad it is but you know i i'm trying to do this on DeFi, which is an incredible headache and it's just made all of this just totally unfun. And so as a result, I'm not participating nearly as much as I'd like to because it's just not fun. It's a major headache. And, uh, you know, all these gas fees and stuff like that. And 
you can i've lost like several different coins because of you know having to you know transfer this crap on my own and stuff i mean i'll tell you i can understand the appeal of uh the whole exchange traded fund and you know how they're going to funnel all the american population and stuff into just using things like coinbase because doing this on DeFi, i mean not only do you get raped in the fees uh but it's really really easy to lose a lot of money um so you know it's it's a uh, it's not nearly as enjoyable as uh, as I usually have in the market. And so as a result, you know, ironically enough, you know, you can see how many different positions I have in here, but I don't even open up this ledger anymore. I don't even really even look at it. The only thing I look at and I'm having fun with is this little account. I don't even give a shit about the stupid ledger money because it's such a fucking headache. So anyway, it is what it is. I don't know whether you're getting any value out of this today or Jared Bryan's just ranting and probably pissing a whole bunch of people off, but oh well. That's what you get when you do these videos uh, when you're sick. So um, so to answer the questions from today, uh, uh, I can't comment on um, on Sjord's FA portfolio. I mean, the irony of it all is that he's doing very, very well. Why he doesn't have this page up on the website, I haven't got the slightest idea, but should. Uh, and if anything, what I need for you to do is when, on Tuesdays, uh, Sjord comes on the broadcast and we have to grill him hard when he's on the broadcast. Um as for the little old lady portfolio, um, you know, you can actually see the positions on the uh, page. Is this stuff updating clear? I mean, I was told that we were going to have current prices for this. So why is this not updating? I have no idea. Just waiting, waiting, waiting. And I'm sure you as paying subscribers are like, why is this not being updated? I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, some point down the road, I suppose it'll get updated. Um, I did go and buy a little bit more of this guy. Like I said, I did uh, I did uh, in Brian's trade room here uh, on this uh, Discord. Uh, I have been posting all of the trades uh, I've been doing. Like I said, I've been having more fun on this Solana thing because I can just sit and trade and I don't have to think about all this crap. Uh, and having to do spreadsheets and all this because it it never works for me. It's always, in fact, I tried to get a guy to help me do this, and he eventually just said, "Brian, you know what? This is it's just too too much work." Uh, so uh, I don't know I don't know how to move forward with this. It's it's just a mess. Anyway, so there's your answer. <laughs> hey, I'm uh, subscribing, paying good money for this. Well, like I said. Uh, I do post every trade that I do here in this uh, Brian's trade room on this uh, on this page. So, and I I'm an open book. If there's any trades that I do, I'd be more than happy to tell you. It's just the reporting of them is just it's shit right now on the site. We really need to get our act together here with regard to this. We really do. So, my apologies. Both of these questions are about basically. You know, the, the website itself and reporting of these uh, portfolios, and they're, they're just not that very good right now. Um, my apologies. It's not really a very good answer for you. I can tell you, for whatever it's worth, uh, this guy doubled. I think this guy doubled. This guy's close to doubling. This guy doubled. This guy doubled. <laughs> this guy doubled. This guy doubled. <laughs> this guy's doubled. This guy just recently doubled. This guy doubled. This guy doubled. So everything that I bought has gone up. This guy actually is a piece of crap. He he did not do anything. This guy doubled. <laughs> this guy, we lost the coins, bought them on Binance. All of a sudden, they just vanished. Fucking piss you off. This guy's gone up pretty nicely. I don't think he's doubled yet. This guy definitely doubled. This guy tripled. Uh, this guy is working up. I think he's pretty close to a double. 
This guy's an absolute piece of garbage. Uh, I don't even know if these idiots are even doing anything anymore. Took a flyer on this, and I even got one of our site OGs to participate with me on this. And every time I talk to him, it's like, so uh, what's that piece of shit that you got me to buy doing these days, Brian? Nothing. <laughs> so if anything, great analogy that you're never going to be right 100% of the time, and that's why you make damn sure not to put more than 5% of your portfolio into any of your name. And how ironic, like this is the one guy I actually kind of believed in this guy, Alex Sturk. Uh, this was, you know, he was a principal of one of these things and uh, it looked cheap to me. So I went and picked some up, but uh, it's done absolutely nothing. This guy, another one that we mysteriously lost uh, in transition moving off of Binance. So, you know, a couple examples of why I don't even really want to do DeFi now because it's just so easy to lose your money on this stupid space. This one here, my computer crashed and the uh, Ledger Live lost the wallet. I still see the coins on the Ledger, but I have no way of figuring out how to get that uh, the coins off of there. Somebody on the site said, hey, you can send them to me because it has doubled. But uh, I'm sitting there totally scratching my head looking at this stupid ledger live trying to figure out how to get this Digibyte wallet working. Uh, I think WAN doubled, EGLD doubled, LPT, this one like tripled. In fact, I even put out a tweet about this. This is a really good example, this LPT of, uh, of what you uh, really should be doing right now in this particular part of the cycle. Uh, so maybe, you know, a little bit more positivity here in this broadcast. Uh, where are we here? Uh, I did up a nice little write up on this thing. Where is it? There it is. So do you understand these, uh, crypto cycles? Mm -hmm. Uh, and do you understand how venture capital works? And can you just let yourself get rich? Because ironically enough, the hardest part of this game is just forcing yourself to get yourself into a risk-free position and then just do absolutely nothing. Just let the cycle take over. This is like uh, Warren Buffett kind of investing. We're going to get rich slowly. So I'm not planning on driving a Lambo this week. But by November 2025, could we be driving Lambos with this one investment? <laughs> you can see where I bought. And of course, this is everything that I teach you guys. Buy weekly Ws, trend line breaks, bottom ends of ranges, bullish momentum divergences. Nothing changes in this space. It's so cliche. Market starts working in your favor uh, and you know, the first thing I want to do here is try and sell half on a double, get yourself in a risk-free trade, maybe sell half on a triple. I think this one was like a 1.5 to one or something like that. And <laughs> I suppose that's the one good part about, uh, this silly ledger experience is it takes me fucking forever to, uh, to, uh, actually get, coins to exchanges and places where I can actually ring the register. Uh, so, and because of all these stupid DeFi fees and all this crap, I have to factor in selling them at higher prices. So I forced myself to, uh, like I said, this one, I sold at like 1.5 to one that uh, ocean. I sold at like three to one or uh, I guess two to one, 2.5 to one. Right. I mean, uh, anyway, point of the matter here is it's a risk-free trade now. And now my number one job, of course, well, I have two jobs. So the first job, of course, is those initial coins. You got them on the books. Just let the, your money work for you. And I will say, you know, like our CTO, Sjord, is very, very knowledgeable in the space. Uh, and I think he makes excellent fundamental analysis picks. And he has a whole bunch of names, uh, I think about a half a dozen or so, where he's already established risk-free trades on fairly sizable positions. And now it's just a question of doing nothing. Just let your money work for you. Uh, and 
can you just be patient and disciplined and wait for the market to go crazy? <laughs> and the weird part about it is that the lion's share of the money, you'll notice that, you know, if, if this happens to be the way that this plays out, who knows? I mean, this is just one forecast. But you notice that, ironically enough, you know, uh, a year from now, we might actually see the prices are still relatively the same. But it's like in that last six, eight months of uh, the cycle, that's where all the fortunes are absolutely made. So your job right now is, number one, like I said, just get yourself into that risk-free trade. Then if you want, and this is up to you, you know, you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but, you know, uh, we often uh, suggest that uh, when we do hit those uh, peaks uh, in price, how many cars can you have on your car carrier, right? And each one of these is like a buy in a reload zone. And then when the asset doubles in price, like here, you sell half of it. Okay, I now have a risk-free car, right? And that's one of my cars on my car carrier. Then the price comes back down into reload zones and you do the whole thing all over again. Then the market perks back up and you sell half of that. So then at that point, you have two cars on your car carrier. Then the market pulls back into reload zones. Maybe you buy a third car. So then it pops up here, sell half on a double, whatever. Now you have three cars on your car carrier, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Usually these cycles, I found that there's about maybe about three or four buying and selling windows. So that by the time we actually get up into the end of the cycle, you've got like multiple cars on your car carrier. And then the question is, can you ring the register and just walk away from the whole damn thing? into the cycle peak and pay your fucking taxes all that nonsense uh we'll see you know uh past two cycles uh, it was like pulling teeth getting my business partners to sell uh but now they've like absolutely brian november 2025 we're putting ourselves on a dollar cost exiting strategy and like October, November, December, January 2026, February 2026, March 2026, we're just going to be slowly exiting. And we don't even really care what the price is. The more important thing is, is that you're just exiting through this window. Can you do that? I don't know. It's up to you. That's what, I'll, that's what my plan is. So... Uh, could we do better on reporting the pages? Absolutely. I mean, where did our FA page go? It disappeared. This is like an ongoing uh, nightmare. It just never ends. I've been uh, working with these guys now for like uh, five years to try and get my old 1980s website uh, uh, up and operational uh, in this uh, modern day era. We came damn close recently. It actually looked like we were um, getting very, very close to living that uh, that 1980s website. And then all of a sudden, you know, over the past couple months, this thing just completely broke. And uh, we have, fortunately, we have a lot of people that are kind of not very happy on the website about the fact that this thing doesn't seem to be operating correctly right now. And when you go in and look at the actual data, you can see that it clearly it's broken somewhere. So to answer your question over here, uh, we can't move forward and address these pages and get them operating the way that they should be until we get this thing operating the way that it should be. I, and there's no way for me to put a timeline on this. Uh, you know, we gave Sjord this project and unfortunately, I think it was just it was just too big of a project to ask of one person. Poor old Sjord. But I will say, uh, he's trying his best. There's no doubt about it. But uh, man, this is uh, this is really difficult. I'd like to see us get back to this thing operating correctly. And I don't know how long that's going to take. That's my answer for you. 
As soon as this thing's fixed, then we'll circle back around and we'll try and get these pages back up and running again. Uh, just never ending. So, you know, the point here, I suppose, number one is that we're heading into some sort of cycle pivot here. The fact that I hear people talking about how this time it's different. You know, I actually saw somebody on, on the internet actually say with a completely straight face, Bitcoin is going to go to $46 million. What? Uh. So, and the worst part about it, of course, is that every time, you know, this thing uh, revamps and makes empty, upping the, the number, upping the number, upping the number. And it's just a potion for disaster. And if anything, what I said uh, I think I said it in the um, in the tweet that I put out. Uh, no, no, no. Where is the tweet? Uh, I think I did a summary tweet here today. Yeah. Uh, this is. And interestingly enough, this is actually the hardest time for a guy like me in the marketplace. If anything, I I mean, do you all remember? What, are, what was the expression that I used through here? Get your what together? Right, this is when we're in green boxes, this is my favorite time in the marketplace. This, this is when... Brian is in his wheelhouse. And I often tell you guys that usually uh, 78.6s, you look back in hindsight and you go, son of a bitch, goddamn market pivoted off that 78.6. And lo and behold, folks, it did it again. So it's in this window here that Brian starts to actually feel pretty good about life. And of course, uh, we look back and go, all those stupid idiots who chased up markets, uh, where are they now? And we start to say things like, get your shit together, get your trading plans together, get your capital together, identify what the names are that you're interested in. But you can't do that now. This is well after the fact. So... It's very difficult. And of course, you know, in this kind of environment, people are coming out with just absolutely just stupid statements. Like Bitcoin's going to go to $40 million. Oh, God. I mean, I don't know where the hell the top is here. I suppose we could ramp all the way up to this trend line here. I mean, anything can happen in these kind of environments. But, you know, Brian's one of those risk first approach kind of guys. So when I do see a price going like this and I consider buying, I have to understand that there's a very realistic possibility. I might just be sitting here for months and months and months, maybe even years underwater. What kind of scares me about this, what they're doing here right now, keep in mind that that Larry Fink guy, he's not your friend. He is here to take your money. What I'm worried about with here is could they possibly be front running this cycle? Maybe this thing pops up here and that's the peak of this entire cycle. And then they end up backing it up and doing absolutely nothing for the next couple of years. That could easily happen. <clears throat> that would piss all of you guys off to no end. Eh? But I don't see any reason why they couldn't do that. Anyway. Uh, I, this is why I don't think it's ever a good idea to get into predicting what's going to happen here. You just have to go with, you know, how do you say this? You have to, like the old expression, you got to follow the chalk marks. And when we're in green boxes, you have to force yourself to come in on the buy side. When we're in red boxes or even above, you know, you don't necessarily have to sell everything, but for heaven's sakes, if you did buy in green boxes, should be at the very least selling enough to get your original capital back in your hands so you have no risk in the trade. Uh, easier said than done, though, I'll tell you that much. Very difficult to get you guys to be buyers down here. 
Uh, and of course, you know, that's when I started buying all this crap. I didn't buy nearly as much as I wanted to because of this whole DeFi experience, but oh well. I've got some on the book, so I guess it's not the end of the world. And I'll tell you, as soon as I got into a situation where all I could do is just, you know, throw orders in and just have fun, uh, as soon as this happened, boo, I just started going back into Happy Land and, uh, and have fun at doing this again. And actually, there's even cute little names. Like, I mean, just so perfect. Look at cute little W's, Wyckoff checks, inside bar reversals. I mean, this is everything that we teach. Uh, and like I said, you know, this one was a fun one. Beautiful uh, reload zone dips. Didn't get a fill, cocksuckers, but oh well. Uh, but then huge double bottom breakouts on big volume. You know, uh, it, there's no difference here. The, the the difference, if anything, is like I said, big brother, thanks to, you know, stupid idiot leaders in my country, uh, uh, are trying to make this as difficult as possible for all of us. And I'm quite, sort of envious of all of you uh, Eastern Europeans, <laughs> Asians, and stuff where you don't have to worry about how uh, brutally corrupt the political system is uh, in uh, in this Western democratic society. Yeah, right. What a joke. <laughs> well, anyway. All right. So told you a little bit about what I think with regard to Bitcoin, and I don't think that should be a surprise to anybody uh, listening to the Beamish. Uh, message hasn't changed. Uh, no, this time is no different. What I would say is that the market does usually like to top out about a month ahead of the happening event, and we're still not there yet. I mean, technically, this could go on for another couple weeks, but it's not different. There's no difference. Nothing is different here. If anything, the fact that people are coming out and saying that this is different means that it's actually exactly the same as always before. And you have to recognize that when price goes parabolic like this, it's not in your best interest to chase. I mean, at the very least, you want to just simply wait for things like 13 EMA tags. This will keep you out of a lot of trouble. The problem that I have here, though, is if this is a weekly price chart, weekly basis, things look relatively uppy. There's no reason to call a top here. There's no volume divergence. There's no price divergence. Hell, well, there's not even any RSI divergence. Willie is stupidly overbought, so you're way too late to be a buyer anyway. But there's no signs that this thing is done. And frankly speaking, you ahead of the happening event, thinking that this bull market is ending, that's stupid. You're just asking for trouble. Don't do it. If anything, this is the big reset event, and this officially sort of marks, well, now we're into a new cycle, and all of the, you know, SBF people that will be crowned uh, geniuses this cycle, they will start showing their heads. And actually, that's, you know, maybe in the comment section of this video, do me a favor, I see there's 70 people watching this video, so actually, hey, we're above 24 uh, viewers, that's a good sign. Uh, maybe you could hit the like button. I don't know. Uh, Brian's pretty salty today, though, so I could understand if you didn't really like the broadcast today. But if you could, in the comments section, mark down who you think this cycle's SBF is, because they are being formed now. Uh, who is this cycle's Do Quan? And actually, from what I understand, that could be an interesting catalyst that actually brings an end to this bull run. Because once we get like on the other side of this happening event, what's going to be the fundamental uh, driver going forward? There's not going to be anything except for the fact that if I understand correctly, Do Kwan now is going to be extradited to the United States and do stand trial. And you remember, when did Bitcoin uh, puke out last go round? Oh, it was right when SBF was, uh, there was SBF's trial, but this is where over here, where SBF, like literally the whole place blew up. So I don't know if maybe the extradition or something is something that, that causes uh, a, a pullback here. That wouldn't surprise me. 
But if you look at things like Bitcoin on a daily chart, this starts to get a little bit concerning. So uh, let's go. Geez, I like how that. Look at that energy webs. This is actually one of uh, Chico Crypto's uh, names. He really liked this. If anything, good looking uh, OBV divergence here. We made new lows, but OBV did not make new lows. I like that. And I like to see, look at the green bars. Look how they perked up here and broke out. And the red bars are actually falling. So this is a good looking chart. I sure like the look of this thing here. Anyway, uh, but that's not what I wanted to show you. What I want. Here's Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, here's the daily chart. So on the daily basis, you can see, look how volume is kind of trailing off here. You know, and all our level oneers, if you did pay attention, uh, you should have been learning about volume impetus. And you can see that actually this high is the same as this high on volume. And they're lower than this high. So you can actually have a situation where you have three lower highs in volume. And this bar right here, look how volume just totally disappeared two weeks ago. That was that bar right there, just gone. So they're pushing price to higher highs, but volume is not moving to higher highs. Something's not right there. Uh, you notice that MACD made a high high, but here's a higher high in price. MACD did not make a higher high. Now, MACD can sometimes, uh, this is the histogram of MACD, sometimes it can actually make these kind of wonky tops that don't go into divergence. If anything, probably my favorite divergence indicator is RSI. And whenever RSI goes into divergence, you better be respectful of this. So uh, you can see, and, and somebody was even calling this like the Batman or Bart uh, kind of looking top. I suppose so you can call whatever you want. Point here is you can see uh, that was this high. So higher high in price, but RSI did not go to a higher high. Uh, in fact, when this happens, this is a, you better cool your jets if you're a bull and just let this settle down and let RSI go in and put in a new W here to actually confirm that it's still bullish because right now it is flashing warning signs that actually it's not very bullish anymore. Now it might do something like this where you see a little bit of an M top and then it just reverses and price just explodes higher and punches through that high. But the issue is this was done off of the 50 level or the midpoint of RSI, which is a very powerful bullish reversal, no doubt about it. This up here, that would happen at 87, 88. Anybody that studied RSI for a while, any reading above 70 in RSI is considered overbought. So already you, are, you have a blatant message from the market, it is overbought. Right, a reading above 70. That's overbought. We have our a divergence, and this divergence is the first M that came in here following this little mess here and then rally up to new high. This M here just simply says, you know, uh, if you're a bull, you better cool your jets. If this goes and puts in another M and rolls over here, hopefully what you see is, well, gee whiz, that looks like a head and shoulders top which structurally would be very, very bearish. It is difficult to break these head and shoulders tops in RSI. That'll probably be a top that will be there for a long time. So as I said on the uh, tweet, uh, we don't really don't want to see that. Uh, I'm certainly not predicting that that's what's going to happen. You know, as I said, I don't get into the business of making predictions. I trade setups. When I see a whole bunch of criteria come through that all sort of validate setups, then I act. And it's just purely a statistical play that I make. And, you know, two thirds of the time when I see this happens, that usually happens. Doesn't mean it's going to, but that's what usually happens. So what I just said here, right, this is what the RSI is telling us. It says if a second M does come in, it confirms that head and shoulders, which would be a nasty structural failure out of the overbought zone, uh, which would be extremely hard to break. So let's hope that doesn't happen because <laughs> I don't want to see that happen. And frankly speaking, I don't think it's going to happen. But 
I definitely think that we have a message from RSI that you better just cool your jets and don't go and do stupid things with your money. Half of the reason why people lose their uh, shirts at this game is they go and buy tops of markets. They go and chase. And then they sit there underwater for like six, eight months, and they can't figure out why they're not making money from trading. So, you know, we're coming into fundamental event windows uh, that have any event. We haven't even talked about celestial events. I think there is a huge eclipse event coming up here shortly. You can see how through the last eclipse event, it put uh, this sort of fuel into the market to rally here. And I've even said this is going to be a cool thread to update and follow and watch how it ages. Because my hunch here is that this eclipse window is going to mark our pivot top. So, all right, we'll see what happens. The only new update that I did on this chart is that, as I had said, we now have confirmed bearish momentum divergences on our momentum indicators. Those divergences are coming in at appropriate trade locations. So you could actually make the argument on a lower time frame charts, like a daily price chart, that not only, you know, three-step process, Step one, location. We have location. Step two, indicator confirmation. We are now have indicator confirmation. Now what we're looking for is we're looking for price. And if price goes and puts in a big fat M, I'm sorry, folks. I'll be shorting this thing if I can. Uh, absolutely. Now, on a weekly basis, like I had said there a few minutes ago, the moving averages, the trend is still very, very bullish, insanely bullish, probably too bullish. But you can see where short-term support is. It's like 50 Gs. So, you know, that's like $20,000 lower than where we are right now. $20,000 fucking dollars. And for whatever it's worth, in years gone by, months, uh, decades, <laughs> um, I've often found that Reload short zones will actually act as great support zones uh, uh, from the other side. So put it all together. You know, we uh, we often say, uh, what, what is the number that you should look for as sort of the knee jerk market should always, you should always expect this to happen at any given point in time, 38.2s which would also correspond nicely with a dip right back into this a previous reload zone. And of course, I've shown you this trend line forever ago, you know, uh, pivot high to pivot high. Interesting how the market respected it through this and through this and through this. You can even see that the market respected it on first blush on the tag there. Then we punch through it. So would it make sense that we come back and just simply play against that uh, trend line and tag the 13 EMA from the other side? Absolutely. Nothing new going on here whatsoever. And then as I had pointed out on uh, things like this 15-16 uh, comparison, the panic dump on the 15-16 comparison was to 50% of that trading range. So just to show you what that looks like. Oops. There is that 50% retracement. Notice, right back into the moving averages. Interesting, too, right off of the initial dump, right into that 13 EMA and the breakout. Well, actually, I guess a little bit higher than that. Then we had to consolidate A, B, C, D. And this was your final capitulation dump into the 30 SMA. Notice the moving averages stay positive through the whole thing. And then just quickly jackknife right back. And I think your buy signal came in right on that candle right there. So, and I showed you uh, the, Litecoin. This one actually even went further. 
maybe this is what Bitcoin has to do. If anything, this would be perfect. So, you know, having an event. Actually, I think that was a little bit for it. I think it was somewhere right in there. Uh, so I think it was anyway, anyone can help me. I think it was the it was either the middle of July or the end of July, something like that. So anyway, trap, big, huge spike up, which is a trap. And of course, all the public gets suckered. Uh, big dump. And in this case, look how they dumped it right back into the reload zone. And look at this really pretty W. You know, if you want to buy, that's what you want to look for. It's really that. It's just as plain as that, folks. So this was absolutely textbook. This is just what happened in Litecoin last year through. <clears throat> it's happening with that. Then maybe you can say, well, maybe I won't buy that. I'll just work a reload zone bid off of this rally. So boom, look at that beautiful buying window right in there. So anyway, that's that's ideal scenario. Actually, I would like to see Bitcoin do this, which would imply that we actually have to come back down into this window. That's that's what I would prefer to see. And then that way, I know that this move is sustainable over time. Uh, having said that, the first move that I'll be looking for is wherever the hell this top is. And like I said, we're still a couple weeks away from uh, two weeks prior or one month prior to the happening event. So I'm not even thinking that there's a top even here this week or next week. I think it's going to be a couple weeks from now. So I don't know where the hell the top is here. Maybe this is the top. I don't know. But I definitely think that we're, you know, within a week or two of that top. Uh, if this is a light coming scenario, then we have to come all the way back down into reload zones, which I would think would actually be healthy. That would be a good thing, I think. Having said that, my initial knee-jerk reaction is going to be looking for uh, Colin and his buddies in his pump chaser zone. This, this to me, I think is probably what's going to happen. So anyway. That's just uh, Brian talking out his butt, making grandiose predictions, but not knowing what the fuck's going to happen. And really, nobody knows what's going to happen. It will just play out the way that it plays out. Uh, and, the, you know, the tragedy of this is even in here, I doubt I would be even the slightest bit interested in buying Bitcoins. What I would rather do is let this thing settle down. And if it does put in some sort of buy signal down here, at this point, then we should go look at the altcoin space and get ready for uh, a new wave of altcoin craziness. And really, probably the best way to look at this is to uh, look at... Uh, uh, oh, no, not this one. This one over here. Look at this total. So, talk to you guys about this before as well. Location, do we have acceptable location for a top to come in? Well, anywhere up here, it's perfectly acceptable in my eyes. Interesting, low, uh, something along that. Oh, actually, maybe we can go a bit higher. Let's see if we can crisp this up. Uh, all right let's see where this thing so we can go probably a little bit higher right eh? oh yeah so i could see another pop here in the next week or so you know all these little pieces of poo i mean i don't know like and what's interesting is this solana you know, these things trade all over the, the market. This just so happens to be listed on Solana. But if I understand, there was one that I was uh, bought over here. It turns out this thing's all over uh, the, tons of different exchanges. So um, I remember when I talked about, oh, my goodness, look at him go. 
So get ready, folks. You know, I still see lots of this kind of stuff happening in the market. Uh, this is a really good example of what I do. So came in on the buy side. It was nice and cheap. Reload zones of this huge range up here. Um, eh, looks like it was a bit early, but interesting how this buy level corresponded with an inverted head and shoulders. Suppose the real sexy buy was that little pivot below there, but nonetheless, sold half on a double. And you can see they're getting ready to ramp this thing. So don't be surprised if you see Brian's banging out more doubles on these things. And, you know, like this is another great hallmark of the end of the, the, uh, the bull. When stupid names do this, keep in mind, this is like, uh, oh, and I, I don't know why this site does that. It, I did buy there. <laughs> you see, for some reason, they took that buy level away. But this, oh, now they took the whole chart away. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh, there it's back. Let's see, is it going to show me the buy levels? Anyway, oh, there we go. All right, so this is like 12 cents. That's $2.24. <laughs> These numbers are ridiculous. That's 20X. And this thing actually did trade up to four and a half dollars. That's 40x off of these damn lows down in here. Now, my average with all of these purchases was like somewhere right around this breakout level. So selling half on a double, selling half on a quadruple, selling half on a quintuple. No, uh, what's eight? Oct octuple. And I have my order working at four and a half, but because it's DeFi, of course, they wouldn't give me a fill of fuckers. So, but anyway, uh, I do have the order working at four and a half. So, you know, this is where you make your Lambos in this silly space is these nut nutso names and go up like 80X, you know? So I'm not going to bother trading Bitcoin and trying to clip it for five Gs here or there when I know that I can get like a, 10x 20x and that's why you know like you see this uh this uh this wife and you can see this buy down at the bottom so hopefully you can appreciate when i see something like this cope Let's see if it loads doing what it's doing here well let's put this into context I can't even, where the hell's the damn top? Oh, there it is up there. I mean, this is nothing. So you can see my shot, my sell half on a double order almost, well, didn't quite get close there. But I, I would, I, had I got the double off, that of course I would have been like, you know, bragging to Colin and all his buddies. Uh, but I mean, you can see what these silly names can do. So I don't know where the hell this thing's going, but what I will say is volume speaks volumes. When I saw that volume breakout, I was like, holy crap, get ready, folks. So this is where the the, the silliness of the market comes in. And where I mean, this one's so funny, this potato. We got one guy on the site. He's got like over a billion of these potatoes now. <laughs> and it just keeps spinning out doubles. Here's another double that uh, Adam should have gotten off. I, I'm, I'm sure he got his seller. I don't know whether Adam's over on the YouTube page or not. But, I mean, you can see what I did. I came in here, bought the lows, and on the same damn candle, selling halves on doubles. Then I came in and reloaded on the same damn candle, selling half on doubles. It came back down into here, and I was like, ah, you know, I got enough of this free shit on the books. I don't need to buy anymore. But this is so cliche. It's ridiculous. And there's no reason why they can't ramp this thing up top here again. No reason at all. I mean, so over the next week or two, am I going to be trading Bitcoin or am I going to be trading this stuff and banging out doubles, quadruples, quintuples, triples, whatever, right? I mean, this is where the money's made. You know, one that I think is going to take off here, keep a mark my words. I think this wolf here, or then they're getting ready to run it. Because look at this chart. This chart's ridiculous. So uh, I came in and bought a little bit here, which was a reload zone of this range. Had to sit there dying a thousand deaths as they brought it all the way right back down to the bottom. I went and picked up a whack more. So that at least brought my average cost down. <laughs> but look at that chart. 
You could just see it. Look at the volume they're starting to buy. You could just see them coming in here. And if you zoom in on this, look at look at that killer double bottom right down in there. I should have pulled the trigger, but didn't bother. But look at what they're doing here. You can just this has got face rip written all over it. So care. You want a nice little. I, I mean, obviously no guarantees from the management. I'm never going to really tout anything. You're guaranteed to make money. But gee whiz, look at that thing. eh? And there's a couple of these that actually look really interesting down in here. This uh, Juan Moore, I have no idea what uh, these guys do. I know, you know, like uh, we have a fun little community that all we do is we just play uh, these little ones. Uh, you know, a little old lady banging out doubles. So this one here, beautiful double bottom. It ramped up. It came right back down, put in a nice inside bar. I picked some of this up. It's basically sitting right where I bought it if you want to join me. But there's my double up. Pretty close, right? All we got to do is just revisit that wick. And then if this thing gets going, is there any money to be made to the upside here? But you notice I'm not chasing an up market. I bought basically a down market. I'm trying to buy against the bottom ends of ranges. That, that's what I do. So anyway, I, there's, no, there's nothing. And again, if somebody says this time it's different, no, this is just the same bullshit over and over and over. Nothing changes with this stuff. It's just, do you know how to play the game? I mean, do you? 80, 70 of you watching a silly video. Do you know how to play the game? I keep barking at you guys, the rules. I hope you're taking notes. I remember we had one guy a couple of years ago. All he did was he just watched uh, the weekend free videos and just took notes like a son of a bitch. And now he's like Mr. Crew. Crypto guru off on some competitor's website now uh, as the the expert and like literally he learned everything for me basically for free. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why I do this, but anyway, uh, I hope you can do that too and come and eat more of my lunch, steal my customers. Why not? That's why I'm doing all this, right? Here's an interesting one that I bought recently. See, it's tough to get these damn DeFi fills here. But uh, that one there, I mean, gee whiz, you can see, not a bad idea coming in at the bottom end of range. I don't risk too much money. So if this thing does crap out and has to come all the way back down to the bottom, I can always add to the positions going forward. Uh, but in essence, I'm not chasing, right? Don't buy up markets. Buy down markets. Try and buy against the bottom ends of ranges. It's uh, what you do. This is one, actually, I think this is one. Oh, yeah, that was that one that I just bought. Uh, here's, this is a cute little one. Look at this little guy. Adorable. I think, I don't know whether I showed you this one or not. Look at that cutie little cutie. And look at this volume. Take a screenshot of that, folks. That's what exactly what you want to see out of volume. I mean, just absolutely perfect. So you not only do you have the big, beautiful Ws, but you've got the volume impetus, right? Any of the level oneers learning volume impetus right now, that is a really, really good example of volume impetus. Got my sell half on a double order working. If it gets up there and I get filled, great, wonderful. If not, eh, it's not the end of the world. Don't take too big of a risk. Just be patient. There's even like stock market proxies. I'm not quite sure how this MVDA idea works. I don't know whether it's uh, it's uh, an actual direct stock market proxy, but I don't know. You tell me. Is that uh, I only got filled on twenty five percent of what I wanted to buy here, though. But when I saw that the other day, I threw my order and I had to buy that fucking thing. So I got filled down here, but I only got filled on about a quarter of what I wanted to buy. But look at that! What I mean, what letter of the alphabet is that? You don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. I mean, what letters do you see there? Thank you, BTC Kyle. You're awesome. So, all right. It's just staring you in the face. Uh, problem is, like, can I come in and buy there? No. You have to somehow have the patience and discipline to work your bids at reload zones. That's the hardest part about this one. Actually, here's one that I haven't bought. Um, 
I want to buy it. I've got stink bids working. It's just so if you want to join me. Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that. I did buy. Woo-hoo. So there you go. There's one in real time, in actual real time right there. Boom. You can see I got failed. Bid working at 78.6. Does Brian eat his own cooking? Do I, you know, do I do what I teach you guys to do? Hopefully you can see. Oh, well, there's a big W that confirmed. Uh, he drew his reload zone following the W. He throwed his throat. <laughs> he threw his bid in at uh, 78.6 because he's always going on about how much he loves his 78.6s. And boom, you can see I bought. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Happy Hanukkah. And I don't even know if I got all of my fill. A lot of the times they just won't give you fills here. Uh, yeah, that doesn't, that does, that looks like a really, really small fill. That's not even much money at all. So my hunch is I probably didn't even get that much of a fill there. Let's see. I love using this Juniper. Juniper. Why do I call it Juniper? Jupiter site. This is such a fun site to use. And it makes this trading stuff fun again. Because I'll tell you, doing this shit on, um, on, uh, on DeFi and using the ledger and getting raped by uh, fucking Vitalik and his stupid uh, fees. Oh, my God. There's no fun in that at all. It's just a complete waste of time. Uh, but this, this is, this is made, made it fun again. Uh, what the hell was the name of that damn thing? It was Bozo. Bozo. Where's Bozo? You see Bozo on here? It's on here somewhere. Maybe I did get all fill. I don't think so. Though. It didn't look like a total fill. Mm, yeah, maybe I did. Where's Bozo? Bozo! There you go. Oh, yeah. So I bought 25 bucks worth. Oh, cool. Awesome. You know, and hopefully you can see, right? I'm very, very consistent in my behavioral pattern. Why 25 bucks? Well, the answer is I don't want to risk more than 5% of my stake on any one single investment. You can see I got 619 plus what's in the desk. That's uh, 700, 800 or so. This is missing a few coins. I'm not quite sure. Uh, there's the bozo. So good to see that I got him on there. But like uh, my boner, it won't show my boner on here, which sucks. Uh, and then there was also another one, uh, print. Uh, they won't show it. So this doesn't include all of the assets that I have. But the long and short of it here is the way that you keep yourself out of trouble in this game is never, ever, ever risk more than 5% of your stake on any one single bet. So this is 25 bucks because, you know, that's less than, what is that? That's not even, that's two and a half percent of this funny number. But keep in mind, this funny number has uh, like this NFT thing in it. So, you know, I, uh, right now, uh, 5% would be, in my eyes, would be about 30, 40, maybe 45 bucks, somewhere in that area. So throwing $25 at a name like this, and then sell half on a double, that's what I do. And it just, it makes the process enjoyable. You don't have to stress about taking too much risk and you just rinse and repeat. I like to have a nice diverse basket. So I've got a whole bunch of names. There's always something hopping here and it keeps me busy. Right? And then I've got just a whole bunch of open orders working. I've got names that I'm still watching that I'd like to try and get in. I've got names that I was working stink bids on like this one, but it turns out actually I just bought this. So Merry Christmas. Anyway, point here is uh, you can see I'm having fun just doing my thing in SOL land. Uh, I suppose I do the same thing in the regular uh, crypto uh, market. Um, but, uh, you know, just just I can't chase. I'm not allowed to chase. Don't chase. Don't chase. Don't chase. In fact, actually, you know, I really wouldn't have a problem if somebody came on the site and said I went and picked up a whack of Litecoin. There a couple of weeks ago because it was in reload zone, reload zone, a reload zone. So I wouldn't have a problem with that. So actually, you know what? That's that's pretty respectable. Just don't break the five percent rule. Uh, and you can see this is the uh, portfolio that I have running uh, over there on the uh, ledger, DeFi, all that crap. And actually, I think this one. Oh boy, look at that beauty! I, you know, so can you see the similarities? between what I just showed you on the SOL stuff and this, this is beta versus tether on Binance. Can you see the similarity? 
Anyone. <laughs> Let's see if we can get five people uh, on the YouTube page that go, oh, yeah, I think I see what you're talking about, Brian. You're buying against the bottom end of ranges. You're buying Ws. Let's see. Is there a bullish momentum divergence on this thing? Holy shit, is there ever. Look at Willie was actually stupid over here. Look at that bullish divergence. Holy crap on a stick. One person, one fucking person. Uh, <laughs> I do this. Out of 78 of you, only one person can see the logic of this trade? Anybody else, please? There you go. Meta money sees it. All right, there you go. Three step, yeah. I mean, the irony of it all is that it's not voodoo what I'm trying to teach you guys. It's actually incredibly cliche. It's just rinse and repeat. Figure out what works. This works about, I don't know, two thirds of the time. And, you know, as soon as this thing doubles, I will try and sell half. Of course, with this goddamn DeFi shit, it's another thing altogether. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. All right? Wish me luck. I don't know. Is there anything else to be said here today? I don't think so. I think that basically is it. Uh, if you have any questions uh, before I run out of steam, like I said, I'm just going to hang up. I'm not even going to go do Liam today. I just feel like crap. And you can probably tell in my voice I'm a little bit uh, bitchy here today. Uh, I did actually recently just go and buy some of this. I mean, you should look at that and go, okay, well, I can see exactly why he went and bought some of this. And actually, this is the one name that Tyler, that Crypto uh, Chico, Chico Crypto, and I actually officially did drive through uh, Chico, California. That was one of my priorities on this trip is I wanted to say that I've been <laughs> through uh, Chico Crypto land. So I can't officially say I know where Chico, uh, California is. <laughs> so anyway, this is one of his names. And, you know, here's another one of his names. I'm sure he has a bunch of them that have done really well. But, uh, you know, he was a big fan of that link. And I think he's being vindicated off of it. Uh, when he was uh, interested in this uh, eons ago, uh, I went and bought so uh, he's been touting this story for a while. But when we got down into reload zones back here, I started buying. This actually is a really good example of everything that we teach on the site. Value trades. This is the venture cap reload zone, 78.6 to 88.6. So this was a total value trade down here. Uh, and then uh, you could make the argument that trend continuation trades it tried to put in a trend continuation pattern here back uh, about four or five months ago, but failed. And they always say that, uh, you know, Linda Bradford Radjke, whenever I used to talk to her in years gone by, eh, give an idea two shots, you know. So here's a really good example where the first uh, trend continuation trade failed. But if you kept focused and drawed your bots or drew your bots and just kept focused, there's the second trend continuation trade. You can see it's working its way up to its target. But the point uh, I'm mentioning, why I'm mentioning this, this was one of uh, uh, Tyler's ideas from uh, years gone by. I think way back here he was touting it. And frankly speaking, I respect his uh, work. I think he's a very good analyst. And I'm long this thing. I'm enjoying it. So the reason why I mention that is that this Energy Webs was one of the names that he was touting for a long time and every time i get any kind of buy signal i just keep adding to this trade because i know one of these days he's going to be vindicated this is usually what happens to fundamental analysts is uh i mean look how high this damn thing went jesus christ where's the top there it is all the way up there 50 bucks <laughs> i mean i don't know whether that's realistic i think this is a realistic trend line i don't know about this one but anyway, the point here is I, I'm 100% confident that one of these days, Tyler's going to be vindicated. This thing's going to go nuts, and I want to be riding his coattails. <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, oh, there's an interesting comment. Elevorn? El Elevorn Leoden. Oh, there's a name. Cool name. Brian, thank you for being sane in this crazy market. 
All right. I appreciate uh, the kind words. Um, so, I mean, the point being that on most of these names, I'm way up. You know, here's another good example. You know, if you were just doing two to ones, you should ring the register here. Uh, you can see I added more to this trade because I liked it so much. I don't even know what my average is, but it's somewhere down in this area. A huge win there. Basic attention. You can see where I'm long here. Huge win here. Danny's name, Cello. I bought the W up big there. Interesting. Just banged into a fog and bomb. Should I be taking profits? Probably. Uh, Dago lost these coins, right? Uh, long from. Oh, no, I'm not. Can't find the fucking coins. God damn, sons of bitches. Digibyte, uh, long from the bottom. Can't figure out how to fucking sell this thing because they don't know how the stupid ledger nonsense works. Doge, long from the bottom. Banged out nice wins here. Fuck you, Alan. I'll take your money every day of the week. Shiba Inu, I would prefer Shiba actually uh, outperforms Doge. So I don't think Alan uh, is running this, but he probably is. Oh. This one's a good example. You better have your uh, sell halves on double orders working. Because <laughs> this one, uh, after we got <laughs> our initial fill, um, <coughs> Oh, I got to stop talking. I should go to bed. Anyway, I'm just going through and you know, showing you how, how big of a dick I've got. Do you like my big dick? It's a pretty big dick, eh? So I hope you guys are enjoying the show. Uh, EGLD uh, bought a little bit here at 36. So oh, there's a double. Uh, let's see. EOS. I'm long from. Actually, this one, actually, I'm a little bit. Uh, I'm still. I'm actually up money on this one. But I did my first purchase like over here. So I was a little bit hasty. And this is the kind of name where last year, because I got so frustrated using this stupid ledger thing that uh, and the whole DeFi and, you know, my stupid fucking communist dictator leader of my country's outlawing us being able to trade on these centralized exchanges and shit um, that uh, that I tried to do this stuff through the DeFi and I just gave up. I got all frustrated and angry and guys who were actually trading with me on the site that live in countries where they could still trade on Binance. We're just going and loading up the fucking boat on these things and just getting stinking rich through this. So congratulations. You know who you are. Uh, specifically speaking of one gentleman in particular, uh, hopefully he remembers uh, Liam when he's ridiculously wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to remember me, but just try and remember Liam. <laughs> uh, his energy webs, like I said, I actually went and just bought some more of this guy. I like him. Uh, good old Zug. Uh, we're loaded up on Zug down here at five, six bucks. I suppose. I don't know whether I did bang out a double on this thing. I think I did. So I think this is a risk-free trade, but just what a pretty chart. Uh, so there's a nice big fat picture of my big fat dick to rub in your face. Uh, there's a nice pretty image for you. Long from this bad boy here. So that's about a 50% gain. Well, maybe I'm getting close up to 80, 90% up in the forties. That'll be my double there. Probably this is another good example where, because this was DeFi, I didn't get that shot off, which I should have. Anyway, I'm not really in a big hurry. My dick's nice and inflated there. So I'm feeling pretty good about that one. Of course, I already talked about Link. Uh, we're killing it here, uh, so nothing to complain about there. Uh, LIT, same thing. Uh, well, average cost here is about 80, 90 cents, so sitting at $1.50. Coming up into that shod level up top here. Now we'll see whether I can actually uh, um, get that shot off. But again, Brian and his, uh, I guess... DeFi is the zipper on my jeans for my because my dick's so damn big I keep getting it caught in the zipper. I don't know. <laughs> now I'm just getting rude. <laughs> I love this one. This is such a great story. I mean, you know, this is like your uh, your Solana names, right? Do you want to sell halves on doubles? Uh, the damn thing goes up a hundred x. Anyway, you, I've already got the double off. I'm already sitting on free coins. It looks like it's getting ready to go again. So get ready. 
There's LPT. I just told you the story about him that my number one job here is just to leave this alone and just let it go. Because frankly speaking, I think this thing is going to easily surpass these highs. And I think that this thing's actually going to be in the thousands of dollars. You know, I, I easily could see that happen. Uh, LTO, this is a good old Sjord's life-changing event, doofus. Let's hope that guy doesn't uh, screw it up this time like he did last time. But uh, no life-changing event references, please. Uh, this one in particular, this is a good example that if we do actually pull back here into the spring, um, I'll probably want to go and reload on this thing down in the reload zone, right? Blah, blah, blah. Rinse and repeat. Cliche, cliche, cliche. Um, I got a bit of it on the books, but probably once more. Matic, uh, this one's worked pretty well. I mean, you can see we just hit, uh, uh, what does that say there? Looks to me like actually we need to get up into this area here uh, before we uh, uh, let more go. <coughs> but you can see where uh, the original double bottom is. Beautiful trade there. And now, uh, so this is your value trade. Remember I had said, you know, 78.6s, nine times out of 10, usually these markets bottom off 78.6s. There's a really, really good example of that. Uh, and now we're just doing the trend continuation trade. Uh, this is also a good example. Maybe that first trend continuation trade stalled out halfway through, then you just keep focus, re-enter on this double bottom, and now you're in the second trend continuation phase. Long and short of it here, we're way up on this thing. So really nothing to do there. There you go. There's another big, uh, another dick pick for you. Uh, let's all circle jerk. Can I circle jerk in your face, please? So there's my uh, big dick in your face. Uh, look how smart I am. Am I actually doing anything here right now? Eh, I should be selling halves on doubles up in this area. Just to get yourself a risk-free trade. But again, you know, this is exactly the same thing as I've been barking about for the past year. Do you get your shit together? Are you ready for the coming bull? Look at this one. This thing could easily, even from 17 cents, this thing could easily double from here. So do I really need to be in a huge hurry to sell halves on doubles? Well, I mean, it's always good to play from a position of strength. But could I, could my dick get even twice as big as it is right now? Yeah, it could. Am I in a really big hurry to do anything? Because I got my act together and I came in and bought where I'm supposed to buy? Uh, I mean, just it's just business as usual. There's nothing really new going on here. There's that ocean that I told you. This is where my dick actually like tripled in size. And all the girls on the site, uh, well, no, there aren't too many girls on the site. All the girls on the porno set, right? They all went, woo, look at you, Mr. Big Dick. But it's all figurative, right? Actually, I've never had any complaints in that department, so I don't need to worry too much about that. But anyway, that's another conversation. Point here is, you know, I've already showed you this. I mean, there's my big dick. You all like my big dick? Oh, nice, handsome dick. Uh, OMG, well, you can see uh, what a buy. I mean, look at that double bottom. That is everything that you're supposed to do in this space. But I missed the fucking trade. I did buy half of my position over here, so I'm just basically breaking even on this one. This will be another one where if we can get that reload zone pullback, I'll definitely be trying to add on this. So uh, this is one where my dick went, ooh, wilt. Did you step in and buy? No, I got all fucking, uh, oh, I hate DeFi, I hate this ledger, I hate all these fees. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And of course, I just left money on the table. Doofus. This one got nice uh, doubles off. In fact, uh, doubles and triples and quadruples. So is there really anything for me to do here? And actually, this is kind of a funny one because a lot of people will get angry at me and they'll blame me for topping the market. But did I top the market or is this basically where the market wanted to top? I might argue that uh, this was probably a natural level for the market to sort of exhaust itself, especially against this previous structural fail level. So if anything, really good example of why we should force ourselves to come in and at least pay yourself for your efforts uh, and make damn sure that you have risk-free positions going forward, right? The easiest way to do that is when the asset doubles in price, out goes half. 
uh i don't know are you guys enjoying my crazy stupidness here uh do you want me to continue through the list i know hopefully this is speaking to the person who asked the question uh on the um on the site uh i've showed you oh look at that now i'm actually making money fucking a um i showed you the uh the little solana portfolio and I, we started this with 500 bucks. So I actually, and that was only like, what, two or three months ago. So I actually fully expect that this $500 account is going to do exactly the same thing as, uh, as this demonstration $500 account did back uh, two cycles ago. I plan to do exactly the same thing. Exactly. No difference. So... Yeah, it's uh, 11, 1200 bucks right now. So fucking what? This should top out in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Question is, can you learn from my demonstration here? And can you do exactly the same thing yourself? I don't know whether you can or not. <coughs> and hopefully you see, did I say... Well, now's a good time to go in and buy P-O-L-S. Did I just say that? Let's see if any of you... Hey, there's Liz. <laughs> what do you think, Liz? Do you like my uh, my salty language? <laughs> nice to see you, Liz. Uh, I keep talking about you on the daily briefs and shit. I sure hope you're... Uh, I, see, I won't talk to you like this when I'm in person. When I'm in person, I'm the polite Canadian guy that that tries to keep his uh, nose clean. <laughs> but wow, and, and Elizabeth there over on YouTube, uh, her and her husband. Uh, the goal is, can I come back to Sacramento one year from now and buy them a steak dinner of their choosing? Because then that means that they stuck around. <laughs> yeah, actually, good point, Michael. The best cold medicine is uh, is start talking about how much money you're making in the market. And all of a sudden, your cold disappears. But I tell you, I feel like poop today. That's no doubt about it. And I feel so badly. Lily, I let him down today. Oof. I hate when I let my boy down. Anyway, I really should be in bed. <laughs> Uh, all right. I don't know whether you want me to go on uh, more about this. You know, there are some fun stories in here as well. Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's just do a poll. If I get five people here that say, please go on, continue, I will. If not, we'll wind this up. We'll give you uh, 20 seconds. Yeah, I know. I, well, I, I spoke to those questions. And if anything, uh, those questions in particular... And like I said, I, I I called the house and I said that I wouldn't be taking Liam out today because I feel like shit. So it's not like I have to get out the door right away. There's nothing I can do about the FA page. Uh, TRI's uh, crypto page. I really wish uh, Sjord would get that up on the site as soon as possible. Uh, but I am going through the little old lady portfolio and just showing you name after name after name after name. So we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, one bed rest. <laughs> uh, I think Andrew's done with me. And then six. So we got six. Oh, and then we got a yes. I don't know what a yes is. Uh, so I guess we'll finish off the list here. And then I really do have to hang up. And, uh, uh, and by all means, you know, if you are interested, be sure to follow me at CR Investor on Twitter. This is the uh, salty um, uh, feed. Uh, this is my Ubic trophy. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> a zoo has a Ubic trophy too. <laughs> uh, this is, and you know, actually I even put out, you don't know, and Liz, this is gonna be my assignment for you. If you really fancy yourself a crypto expert, you have to know this story. And if you don't know this story, you don't know crypto. I'm not going to tell you. And actually, I haven't even really said what this story is. Because, I mean, uh, repeatedly over the years, I have talked about this. But this is crypto. This story, everything about this is the perfect analogy of crypto. And also, sadly... It's also 
this guy. This is the absolute perfect analogy of crypto. If you don't know who this guy is, you don't know crypto. And frankly speaking, you probably should not be in this space if you don't know who this guy is. Look at this, even in the mirror. I just noticed that now. Look at that FU. <laughs> so even while he was doing this broadcast, he was subconsciously telling the public to fuck off. <laughs> so do you know who this guy is? Eddie, do you know who this guy is? I don't know whether Eddie does. Wow, I love that crypto history channel. I, I I would hope that I go down in the annals of history as what you said there, right? If you're like crypto history channel, I tell you, there's very, very few people that speak with a voice of reason uh, anywhere in our society right now. That's good, Michael. Yeah, okay, at least you know the story. Do you know his name? Do you know the story behind uh, the whole cabbage coin? I mean, it's tragic, really. And uh, hats off to you that you actually know who this is. I bet. Uh, Liz, do you know who this guy is? I bet you don't. And I bet even if you spent the rest of the afternoon trying to figure out who this is, the, the these people, they go on the Internet and they actually try to wash the Internet of all reference to them, so it actually becomes very difficult for you to find out who the hell this dickhead is. Right? We could go on all afternoon about how many of these different stories there are. I mean, there's a reason why 90, 95% of the public loses money at this game. I hope you understand. Liz? Do you, have, have I scared you enough? You know, Liz, if anything, is a really good example of the public. And really, my job is first and foremost to scare the shit out of you. Maybe I don't really want to do this. I didn't realize how dangerous this is. This is a very dangerous game that we play. And like I said, 90 to 95% of the people that play this game can't play this game. They consistently lose at this game. I don't know whether you can change that. You know, what I absolutely love about TRI, like we even have a little old lady room, and it's just post after post after post after post of people making money from trading, learning how to play the game correctly. And they're constantly coming on here going, thank God I found ran into you, Brian. You know, I mean, these red dots, they are sells. They are take profits, you know. And it's just post after post after post of people making money from trading. It's what we do. But if you don't understand, first and foremost, that you as a public participant, if you come in here and you think that you're smarter than us, you're going to fucking lose money like that. You're going to, we'll, we'll take your money and we will trade circles around you and embarrass you. This is just the way this stupid game goes. So, and you know, like why are people now saying this time it's different? Oh, you stupid idiots. And keep in mind, you know, like I even put this out earlier, every single cycle, we always have scandals in this space. Always hacks, frauds, scams. Always, that's that's the hallmark of venture capital. What's um, uh, what's uh, SPF the uh, the poker guy? What's that guy's name? I even have him on here. Probably um, was it FTX? Was it? What's uh? Was that his name, Guy Fo? I don't think that was his name. Uh, let's see whether I have any references to him. Probably don't. Uh, no, that's too bad. Nothing? That's too bad. Uh, is uh, 
I don't even have them. Anyway, you know, really, really good. No, not SBF. The 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 crook, the actual real criminal behind the whole thing. Anyway, uh, I'm getting way off topic here. So uh, if anything, let's let's just finish this off. You know that question that was asked uh, on the um, on the uh, what was it the the, the AMA document. If anything, I want to, uh, at the very least, when you watch through this, yeah, the website, it needs a hell of a lot of work. And I don't know when the hell we're going to get around to it actually looking the way that it should. But at the very least, what I've done here with you is these are all those little old lady names. I've gone through and showed you how big my dick is and how I'm just so fucking awesome. Um, and uh, let's just finish off this wonderful uh, rant of Brian's. And then, uh, and then I'll send you people on your way. We don't need to get into SPF criminals and all that crap. Anyway, Rune, here's a good example. I thought I bought this, but because of DeFi and stupidity, uh, it turns out I didn't buy this. Oh, how fucking frustrating. Um, or I did buy it, but we just mysteriously lost the coins. So thank you very much, DeFi. If I could just do this on a centralized exchange, it really wouldn't be that big of a deal. But anyway, boom, 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 boom. The good part about this one is uh, Sior did invest a lot of money for TRI into this name. Uh, so we're also making money on this on the fundamental portfolio. But I got my ass handed to me on buying this on DeFi and losing the coins. Ubik told you about the story. Uh, way to go, Alex Sturk. Uh, and of course, Alex has completely disappeared. Why these people are not doing anything, I have no idea. My hunch is it's probably a dead coin. But what I will say is from now on, again, as an excellent testament to this space, I now have a trophy. Uh, and uh, if anything, uh, for the rest of my life, uh, there is my reminder of Ubik and uh, the potential for this space. Uh, and how it can turn into an absolute train wreck. So make damn sure never to invest more than 5% of your stake on any single name. So I've got that as a reminder for the rest of my life, because frankly speaking, I think this thing's dead, but eh, we'll see what happens. VGX, this is a funny one. It's interesting how it's still alive because uh, we went, or at least we, I think I went and bought some of this off of the bottom I think I bought it somewhere down in here, though, if I'm not mistaken, because I think it was around 10, 20 cents or so. Uh, and it turns out they went into chapter 11. I don't know what's going to happen here. I did want to go and buy some more. And then it was like, well, they went into chapter 11. OK, fine. Let's not buy. We won't add any more. But it's still alive. So that's kind of ironic. If they can get their act together. I don't know. You tell me, has this thing got any room to move up here? It might be dead. I mean, you saw how many doubles and quadruples and quintuples and stuff I've gotten off. So I've obviously more than offset these two names. But nonetheless, you're always going to have some dogs. And this is why you never put more than 5% of your money at risk on any one name. Because you just never know which ones are going to be the dogs. Uh, when? Uh, I think I showed you earlier. Uh, I'm long from... Uh, 18 and a half. So now sitting at 29, we get up into the 40 area. I'll sell half on a double. So really nothing to do here right now. It, you know, this is a good example where if it does come back down into the bottom end of the range, if you want to join me, feel free. Am I going to endorse you to come in on the buy side here? Probably not. Good old XLM. Uh, interesting how this is now a bot setup that's working away. I think I'm long from down here somewhere. Um, this is Stellar Lumens. So not really in a hurry. I did miss a double opportunity on this pop here because remember Brian bitching about the stupid ledger and DeFi and all that crap. So uh, yeah, I, if we do get this bot set up to work, then I'll be well more than a double. So don't really need to do anything there. Good old Cripple, same sort of story. Uh, came in and bought uh, a whack of this off of the bottom down here. Beautiful Ws. Missed my double opportunity on this pop right here. You know, same old, same old, broken record, blah, blah, blah. I think actually now this thing's trying to put in one of these trend continuation trades. Although, man, eh, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to take that off the books. I don't really like that. It's gone too far. 
So I think what we'll just simply say <clears throat> is uh, reload zones within reload zones. Maybe if we get another uh, W uh, on the other side of this trend line, you can see how it's broken out. If it can actually spit out another W down in here, then that's probably going to be, you know, and actually ideally, I think we'd actually like this to maybe even come in a little bit lower, say down in that area, then that would be a nice uh, reload zone W to actually justify buying. So keep an eye out for that. We'll get rid of the momentum trade. Still sitting around value and you can see where the W is here. So that's what it's really trading off of. But no reason to touch this. And I think I'm long from down here somewhere. What does it say? 38, uh, 34.56. So where's that? Oh, that's right down in here. So uh, also 41.27. 41.27 would be in here. So you can see I was buying and interested in buying all down in this area. And if you wanted to join me, that's probably where I would say, uh, you know, get your stink bids working or wait for some sort of W to come in. Zen, uh, you know, pretty similar uh, logic. Uh, 937s is where I'm along this. So we're up you know, about 30, 40%. I would say the dick is uh, what, about a third inflated now. Not quite half mass, certainly not double territory. But what's good to see is you can see lots of W's. Me likey the W-E. So that's good. Uh, Derp, this one's up and down like a horror's drawers. Looks like I missed a really good buying window right here recently. I'm not actually in this one. And actually, interesting, look how they left a big old gap down there. You don't see that every day. So my hunch is if you're patient and disciplined, this is probably the buying level. Uh, at some point down the, uh, down the road in the future, that might take years to get filled, though. Who knows? They'd probably do something like this. So, you know, is this the first wave? And then there'll be one more wave probably into the summer. Uh, you know, uh, uh, and then work its way down. So something like that there to there. It's probably something along those lines. So this probably doesn't get filled in until well, maybe middle summer. Usually uh, right around my birthday is usually a soft period in the market. So that's where I would expect some sort of trough. And historically, uh, usually... June is kind of a crappy uh, time in the month uh, in the market anyway. And usually that July 4th holiday weekend uh, when Jimmy and Liz are going crazy for lighting off fireworks and the whole thing, uh, that's usually when the markets like to bottom. All right, everybody wraps themselves in the American flag and we all love capitalism again. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Can't do anything there, of course. Missed an absolutely incredible buying opportunity right in here, but... Uh, I'm not on next C, so uh, I don't know how I would participate in that. C pool, uh, Dick's pretty inflated here. I would only buy if we could come back down to my original buy level. I sold halves on doubles, all that kind of fun talk. Uh, so hopefully you can see nothing really out of the ordinary going on here. If I did want to reload, notice, uh, 78.6 is basically where I'm originally long from. So, you know, nothing to do here. In fact, there's a big fat M staring in your face. There's an M within an M. So this thing's saying don't touch it right now. Just leave it alone. CRV, well, there you go. Uh, clearly, you can see where you're supposed to be long. Uh, 279. I'm not quite sure what that's in reference to. Oh, uh, this thing's already gone up and down, eh? Mm. Um, I need to buy a half position on double bottom at 51.7. So 51.7, yeah, you know, that makes sense. And here we are now at uh, 80. So rally up into a buck, buck 10, buck 20 area, 4.669 up against these previous highs. In fact, actually, we can even do now a fog and bomb off this huge bottom here. Let's see where that tells us it wants to go. So, uh, boom. All right. So 2.618, basically saying that if we do get back up into this area uh, up here, right, notice what happens when I put reload zone. Oh, hello. 88.6, 78.6, Brian's favorite fib. This is the venture cap reload zone. So I would actually make the argument 
that anybody who was bearish of this up here is where they're going to come in and they're going to repeat their bearish sort of stance. Not down here, up here. So they're going to work the market back up top into this area. Had you had the tenacity to come in and buy W's, buy reload zones, buy W's in reload zones. I mean, this is so freaking cliche. Elizabeth, are you paying attention to this? This is exactly what you have to be learning. Can you learn this? I don't know. But what it means is you can't be a buyer here. You were supposed to be a buyer here. And of course, when we get up into this area, you got to let them have some, right? Force yourself to get paid for your hard-earned efforts. All right, come Inu, speaking of big dicks, I like this one actually to start thinking about reloading. And I noticed that this one, he likes to bottom when the broader market looks like poop and Bitcoin looks like poop. So if we believe that Bitcoin's coming into some sort of top here in the not too distant future, then it means that this thing's probably going to put in some sort of bottom down here. And is that cliche against previous market structure bottoms against venture cap reload zones? I mean, it's everything that we teach. So the only thing that's missing here is we just don't have any W's yet. What would be interesting about this one is do we have any bullish divergence yet? Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. So, hell, you could even make the argument there's an OBV divergence here, too. So the writing's on the walls. I actually don't mind this one. But, you know, if anything, what I like and what I would like to see here is maybe if we're lucky, this is like a left shoulder, neckline, head, a dip into the right shoulder, and then go. All right. So you have that head and shoulders pattern. So that's what I'm going to be watching for going forward. And if that head and shoulders pattern fires here between 78.6 and 88.6, that's got buy written all over it. Notice you can see I was interested before, but we never did get the, the bullish setup here. So uh, half of the time in this game, you just have to wait and wait and wait and wait and then wait some more and then wait a little bit more then wait some more after that. All right, so now if I was drawing this, it would look something like that. So can we get this kind of pattern to come in, please? So, you know, actually, Liz, this would be a really good one for you guys to uh, practice with, right? Uh, you know, are you a little old lady? Um, I think little old ladies could come in and start nibbling away here. Uh, do you want to actually trade setups and do you want to just, you know, really fine tune your purchases? Well, show me W's down here because I think we have location. We have indicator confirmation. Now what we need is some sort of price structure to frame the risk. So this would actually be a really good one, Liz, for you and Jimmy to really uh, focus in on. And what a perfect name, right? Come in you. There you go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> CHR, oh, well, uh, you can see bought. Look at this. This is absolutely textbook what I'm trying to teach you. So, <clears throat> you know, you got location, bottom end of range. Do we have indicator confirmation? I guess so, because I, uh, you can see I went and bought in November. Beautiful W. I mean, absolutely textbook. Sell half on double. So we got a risk-free trade. Hell, it looks like I should be selling half. Another half on another double up here. But of course, this is DeFi. And of course, Brian's damn. <laughs> you can see <laughs> You can see the damn comments already. Eh? <laughs> so if I haven't sold any yet, I probably should get off my fat ass and sell some up top here. <laughs> but what a great example of everything I'm trying to teach you guys. And look how big and inflated and fat my dick is. Wow, is that ever cool? Do I want you buying up here? No, you can't be a buyer here. You just have to leave it alone. If you really wanted to join me, draw your reload zones. And oh, what a surprise, 88.6 is basically the double bottom level. Everything that I teach you people, can you be patient and disciplined and if you want to buy, you just have to simply wait for this thing to work its way back down into reload zones. 
Uh, FPS. This is an interesting one. This is uh, Zug's uh, play, uh, one of Zug's play. I'm not quite sure how this thing actually derives value, though, because it seems to move in opposite to the entire crypto market. And I don't think it's like a classic cryptocurrency story. But having said that, interesting how off of this double bottom, we banged into 2.618 and then just melted back down. This is a really good lesson for everybody on why it's so dangerous to come in and look at these kind of names with these huge tails, because I think this tail has to be traded to. It has to be eaten. And that's exactly what's happening here. I have a feeling that this is also like that come in you and that it moves opposite to the rest of the market. So I would be careful. Don't just go and buy this thing willy nilly. It's a bit of a strange creature this Frax price index share. So uh, just be careful with this thing. Yes, I am on. I might even go and add some more if we can actually get some sort of W to come in here. But right now, I'm just leaving it alone. A great reason, don't put more than 5% of your stake in any one idea because you just never know what's going to just do nothing and just sit there and just be a dead piece of poo on you. Sushi, of course, uh, I think I bought some of this thing back in here. So I am up on this trade. Having said that, this is another example where basically last October, November, I was really, really frustrated and angry. And the sad part about it is, is that's the only person that loses is me. I'm the only one that loses by getting frustrated and angry about the stupid DeFi crap and all that. I mean, this was one hell of a gift of a buy right down in here. You know, remember I said just earlier about that uh, that uh, FPS, like wicks and tails like to be eaten. When you saw this tail, and especially this tail, you knew that these things were going to have to be eaten. And look at this W that came in right down there at the bottom. And of course, we all went crazy through that October uh, eclipse window event. And look at what this thing just did. Oh, I, straight up. Uh, I think you can make the argument that there was probably some sort of value trade down here. I did buy a little bit of this in here. As I said, I think that's what this thing showed. Uh, $1.48 on my second purchase. Blah, yuck. So I am up on the trade, but I could have done a lot better. I should have been adding to this thing down here, but oh well, it is what it is. Uh, as you can see, after this rally, I said if I wanted to add or buy, then I would have to be working orders there. So uh, obviously it did not come back down to there. You could argue that this was a uh, bullish bot setup. So you go there to there. You know, your value trade is coming in off of there. So that means your momentum trade is... Uh, There to there. So coming into 127s, this is just like Bitcoin, right? I would not be surprised if we're going to get some sort of stab up into 127s, 1.618s. If I wanted to buy, I have to be patient. And I miss this bot because you can see, wow, one low, two lows, three lows, beautiful double bottom there. Even a nice double bottom right off the bot entry level. So you can clearly see where the buy was right there. Move stop to scratch, move stop to trailing, and never did come back to scratch. And woohoo! Uh, did you get your fill on the bot exit? Maybe. Uh, I wouldn't fault you if you did. Uh, do you still have a little bit on the books and you're just trailing three high low method, moving averages, parabolic, SAR, whatever? keep you in the trade as long as possible could be. Do you want to spoon feed some at 127s and 1.618s? Not a bad idea. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, you could probably also do things like fog and bombs there to there. And let's see where this takes you. All right, 2.618 up against that 1.618 level. My hunch is there's going to be some sort of pop up in here and that's when we top out. So. Anyway, had you uh, been in on this, I like I said, I was long from like a buck, buck and a half, not really a very good price. Uh, really good example of, uh, you can see I was interested, but I just never fucking got around to pulling the trigger correctly. Uh, I 
is that 101? Is that where I bought this thing? I don't know what 101.4 stands for. <laughs> Great note taking, Brian. Uh, I should probably go look at my notes, see what I did. But anyway, point of the matter here is we get up into this area. I probably should let some go up top here. And if I wanted to buy, right, I have to wait and be patient. Like I heard some guy the other day online and a guy that I thought actually had half a brain in his head, but it turns out it doesn't even have half. Maybe he's got a quarter of a brain. I don't know. But anyway, he's like, buy Bitcoin now. Buy. You've got to buy Bitcoin. 70 fucking grand. I mean, just uh, drives you crazy. Anyway, so this guy here, no way in hell I could justify paying $2 for this thing. If I wanted to buy, I would pay half of what this thing's trading at now. And really, I would focus laser beam on 78.6 is down the road. That's where I think that this thing's probably a buy. So can't touch it now, but hopefully you can see there's a reoccurring theme here. Nothing's changing. Here's of course another, uh, Brian's got a big fat dick and I'm gonna rub it in your face. Let's all circle jerk together. And I hope I uh, don't uh, get it in your hair because hey, if I do, well, that's the way it goes. Uh, bought, and actually this is, uh, one of our OG Zug, great guy, uh, terrible life, uh, challenges he's going through right now. Of course, uh, anybody that has to deal with death, it sucks horse cocks. We all know that. But the one good part about it is when I do die, at least I get to go be with Jojo. So there is one silver lining about all this. Point here is, uh, thank you, Zug, for an excellent idea. When I saw this chart, I was like, I got to get all over this. So it has gone and doubled. <clears throat> We've got the double off. So basically, I have a risk-free trade. I can't get hurt on this thing. Would I recommend that you come in on the buy side here? Right now, absolutely not. You want to go and throw in a stink bid, basically where I'm long and join me. And I might even just ask Zoom to basically go and probably work my order, original buy level, and get the second car on at exactly the same price that I got the first car. It's identical. Nothing new. Oh, so there's really nothing to do there. Can I be a buyer here? No fucking way. Uh, draw your reload zones. And my hunch is reload zones probably line up where I'm originally long from. And then last but not least, kind of a fun story, the Luna stable coin. Uh, of course, these stable coins are supposed to have a peg of one to one uh, versus USD. This guy was just an arrogant fool and he just painted a big fucking bullseye on the back of his head and the 1% went after him and completely embarrassed him because he was just so fucking arrogant. And if anything... This gentleman's story is a good lesson for every single one of you. Don't get arrogant at this game. This guy was stunningly arrogant. And, and as a result, the whole fucking thing blew up in his face. And now, you know, they're talking about extraditing him to the U.S. And yeah, who knows? Maybe he's going to have to do jail time. I would just simply make the argument we had a fun little double bottom that came in off of this it's a trade we bought some i was a little bit verklempt at the guys that i did this trade with that we didn't take some profits on this pop but eh, what the hell gold plated vodka trades uh the ad i asked uh one of the guys that did this trade with recently uh, well you know what's the plan here I might argue there is value in establishing risk-free trades and get your original capital back in your hands, but I'm just going to let this thing slide as sort of like an experiment in what happens going forward. I really don't, we didn't put a lot of money in it. It was like a few hundred bucks or something. We'll see what happens. And of course, if it does get back to parity, then I think the position turns into about 20, 30,000 bucks. And we will officially go and I will take a picture of the gold plated steak that we're actually going to eat as a reward for uh, holding on for this thing to move back to parity. Who knows if it happens or not? It'll be a fun meme if it does happen. If it doesn't happen, eh, who cares? <laughs> so.
There is the little old lady portfolio uh, in all of its glorious uh, Technicolor. Should I have bought some more? I think as you can see from this site, I still have way too much cash on the books. Um, if anything, I got to figure out some way to uh, efficiently allocate this capital into this space because uh, the whole DeFi thing is just driving me crazy and I've got people buying shit all in 10 different places and uh, it's uh, it's absolute chaos and I've done a really, really bad job at reporting this. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think what I want to do actually uh, uh, hire an admin assistant. I tried to get a volunteer to help me do this and I don't think it went very well because didn't pay him any money. So I didn't really have any skin in the game, but I think I'm gonna have to actually hire an admin assistant to actually do this every single day. Ask me, Brian, what trades did you do? And they manage this because I, you know, I'm a trader. And frankly speaking, I make way too much money, you know, whether it be futures trading or whether it be crypto trading or stock trading and stuff to get mired in the weeds of uh, reporting these things. I just want to trade. And so as a result, I don't really care whether this shit looks 100% professional. I know that's not really the best attitude to have. But I'm in this to make money from trading. I'm not in this to sell site subscriptions. I did this whole thing. And then, of course, you know, we got to get our act together with this shit. Like, I, I wanted to sell site subscriptions because uh, I had a 1980s website that actually worked really, really well in helping timing trades in the market. You just got to get this 21st century experiment in this thing to do what my 1980s website done. And recently it broke. So now we're spending time trying to figure out what's wrong with this thing and get it working correctly. How long it takes for us to get this thing working correctly again and restore sort of site confidence in these tools and get the screeners operating the way that they should. And then eventually we'll get to actually like, I really think we should have our fundamental analysis portfolio page on here. And that's got to be a priority to get that up and running before this is all looking 100 percent, you know, automated and shit. So, yeah, there's tons of stuff still to do. And keep in mind, too, I'm still working with my old buddies uh, over at Top Step. I'm about 50 percent of the way through their uh, combine sort of uh, uh prove that you can actually make money from trading kind of thing. But I'm just trading one simple setup every single day with them. And frankly speaking, I think I would actually like to just go back trading futures contracts and let them clear all the trades, let them clear all this crap. And like I said, you know, I did really well on the Trex trading because I let them handle all this admin shit. And I just showed you what the account looked like on their site. So I'm tickled pink that the Solana thing, we've got this up and running. And I don't want to be bothered with writing down what these numbers are and, you know, I, what, uh, you know, when did I do the trade and all that shit. So just a, an announcement to the site. I think I am going to officially look to hire an admin assistant to uh, do all the admin of reporting these numbers. So if you are interested in being my assistant, please send me a DM um, and, uh, and that should be a major priority because that's the only way I think that this is going to get back, back to the point of it actually being uh, something that you guys go, yeah, this is fucking awesome. And, and it's updated regularly as I have to hire somebody to actually do this on a daily basis and make sure manually that it's all updated. So if anything coming out of all of this, I am throwing out a job offer. Who wants a job? <laughs> and I'll actually pay you money uh, to help me get it done. So anyway, that's an interesting twist that I wasn't expecting out of that. But hopefully that speaks to uh, these questions. Because you're right. Uh, this needs to be much, much uh, better. Uh, and uh, you know, for you new people to trading, uh, I mean, I can go through this. I do this on a fairly regular basis. Uh, but obviously not everybody watches all these videos and doesn't pay attention when I do go through all of these. I do this probably about once a month 
I just go through every single name and tell you exactly where I am with all of this stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, like I said, uh, the ga gauntlet has been cast. Uh, DM me if you're interested in this job. And I think uh, I'm going to have to pay you money uh, and actually have it done uh, on a paid basis. And then that way I know you'll actually do it uh, and it'll get done. So anyway. All right. I think I'm going to leave the rant at that. Hope you guys got some value and girls uh, got some value out of all this. Uh, slow and steady wins the race. Don't take no wooden nickels. I think I've shown you repeatedly over and over and over again when I went through all this, uh, these uh, little old lady names. There's very few names here that are actually in buying windows. There are a couple names that I am actually buying, uh, but you better make damn sure uh, that you're not chasing. So if you want to make note of the names that I did buy and you want to join me, you're more than welcome to. I will never tell you not to buy something that I buy, but at the same time too, I will never ever tell you what to buy or sell. It's your money. What you do with your money is your business. It's not my business. And I have no vested interest whatsoever in shilling any idea at you. The only reason I'll talk about a name is because I'm actually putting my own hard-earned money into it. All right. Have yourselves a great day. All the best. BMA for the win. Don't take note with nickels. Remember what you, what you is. And the only thing I've to say to you is bye for now.